Joining me now is Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. Senator Graham, welcome back Thank to Meet you. the Press. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. We yes, are going to get to Ukraine. I want to start Good. with Israel. Mm -hmm. I want to get your response to how President Biden reacted to MSNBC's <clears throat> Jonathan Capehart about that hot mic moment where he was overheard saying he's going to have a come to Jesus moment with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Here's what he said. Okay. He's hurting, in my view, he's hurting Israel more than helping Israel by making the rest of the world. It's contrary to what Israel stands for. And I think it's a big mistake. Senator, do you agree that Prime Minister Netanyahu is hurting Israel by not doing more to address the humanitarian crisis? No, I, I really don't. I'd like to help the humanitarian crisis, but when the President of the United States talks about Bibi and not Hamas, we're missing the boat here. When you talk about red lines against Israel, we should be talking about red lines against Iran. Israel's not killing American soldiers. Iran is through their proxies. So I would urge President Biden to hold the great Satan Iran accountable for killing soldiers in Jordan and attacking shipping. So, yeah, I think he's got it backwards. We should be all in and helping Israel. We should try to help the humanitarian crisis, but don't say or do anything that would empower our enemy. And President Biden does spend plenty of time talking about Hamas. The issue here is, is there not more that Israel can do to help the humanitarian crisis there, there, open up a right, crossing there for their be. own port in Just the area? Stay tuned in that area. I think Israel will be coming up with some sea corridor relief ideas. But the lie that struck me the most in the State of the Union, he told Hamas, if you release the hostages, the war will be over. I literally about fell out of my seat. Is the president saying that if the hostages are released by Hamas, they can stay in power? That ends the conflict. I want to be very clear about this. President Trump believes it's non-negotiable when it comes to Hamas. They have to be destroyed militarily. They can't be in charge. So I'm challenging the Biden administration today to clear this up. You cannot allow Hamas to stay in power. You can't allow them to have six brigades to do October 7th again. So the hostage issue is important, but we have to have a non-negotiable policy when it comes to destroying the military capability of Hamas. And President Biden said that he does stand firmly behind that objective. Well, he shouldn't have Prime said Minister the war is Netanyahu's. over if you release the hostages. Right. It will not be over. And, and that hostage negotiation, that potential temporary ceasefire, those talks have currently stalled. Yeah. Let's move on to Ukraine, Senator. Right. You have always supported aid to Ukraine. You've yeah. argued it's critical yeah. to keeping yeah. Putin from invading yeah. its NATO allies. Now, former President Trump has said that he would only <clears throat> support it if it came in the <clears throat> form of a loan. And that's yeah. not typically how the United States supports our allies. Why yeah. do you think that's the best course of action right now, Senator? We're $34 trillion in debt. Nobody wants to help Ukraine more than I do. But President Trump is trying to do two things here, help an ally, but tell the American people, pay us back if you can. I think most Americans would like to help Ukraine, but the idea of giving and never being repaid should be off the table. He mentioned this to me, I think, playing golf. Why don't we make it a loan? Well, we did that in World War II with Britain. So when you're $34 trillion in debt, you need to be thinking about the American people, just not allies. So I think the loan is the way to get the aid to Ukraine. He will be speaking, President Trump, to the speaker tomorrow or Tuesday about turning the aid into a loan. It would be forgivable, no interest. They have tons of minerals in Ukraine. You get back on your feet, try to pay us back. Trump told you he's going to reach out to the speaker. Yes. Are you confident this is something that the White House would sign on to, given the fact I, I that this is I can't imagine any member of Congress would object to trying to get our allies to pay us back when we're $34 trillion in debt, if they can. We're talking about a waivable, no interest loan, but the idea of not putting, uh, of, of not changing when you're this far in debt, uh, uh, I think most people would welcome it. Let me get you to respond to something that Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski had to say. She said the following about the influence of former President Trump, quote, let's just not even exist as a Senate then if we have to ask permission from Donald Trump for everything we do. Let's just do our work. Is Donald Trump ultimately calling the shots in the Senate, Senator Graham? Uh, no. I mean, I voted against things that, you know, he doesn't like. The point is to Lisa. Would you support 
the idea that our allies should pay us back if they can when we're thirty-four trillion dollars in debt. This is America first in action. It's not isolationism, but it is considering the needs of the American people. I hope to be going to Ukraine soon, and I hope to be able to tell them the aid is coming. It will be in the form of a loan. Pay us back if you can. I want Russia to know if you think Ukraine's going to be out of this fight, you're dead wrong. You know, Senator Mitt Romney said that Ukraine's economy has just been devastated, that there's no possible way yeah. they'll be able to yeah. pay yeah. back a loan. What if they can't pay back this loan, Senator? Well, then, then we're not, it'll be waivable, no interest. We're not trying to make money here. We're trying to protect the interests of the American people. They're sitting on some of the most uh, rich mineral deposits in the history uh, of Europe. If they can get back on their feet with our help, See if they can pay us back. Same with Taiwan. So, Senator Romney, what's wrong with asking people to pay us back if they can? Mm -hmm. Let me move to the border now, another area where former President Trump has had an influence. There was a deal that came together right. in the Senate, never got an actual vote. You were very supportive of it, of it initially. Here's yeah. what you said about it in January. This is the best chance I've seen since I've been up here to have true border security reform. To those who think that if President Trump wins, which I hope he does, that we can get a better deal, you won't. In his State of the Union address, mm -hmm. President Biden accused Trump <clears throat> of effectively yeah. playing politics and derailing this deal. Is he yeah. right, Senator? You really supported this and then turned against it. Well, there was no real re parole reform. The man who killed Lake and Riley was paroled in the United States. He came from Venezuela. So President Biden is apologizing for calling him an illegal immigrant, the alleged murderer. President Trump went to Georgia to meet with the family of Miss Riley to apologize for a country that allowed the killer to get in. So I voted against the bill because it was insufficient on parole. Yeah. But there will be border security attached to the loan idea. Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, President Biden said that the term that is now used yeah. is undocumented. But let me just get back to this. Which deal. really pisses let me, just, me off. Let, but let me, <laughs> but Senator, let me just get back to this deal, though, because yeah. the, the border security union endorsed this bill. Is it something they, better than nothing, given the yeah, crisis good, that good, you are talking good about? Good question. They also endorsed my idea, you know, have a break glass moment at 5,000. When you get to 5,000 a day, you shut down the border. The Border Patrol Union said 1,000 a day is a crisis, 5,000 is a disaster. So the bill can be made better. They will be a bill. Remain in Mexico is the key. The Border Patrol told me that if you go back to Remain in Mexico, 70% of it goes away. I think the House will pass the Remain in Mexico bill. But you know better than I do. Remain in Mexico is dead on arrival in no, the Senate. No, it's not. No, it's not. Well, that, at this current point in time, we'll doesn't seem to have we'll the votes see. in the Senate. We'll Let's see. move on to uh, something that happened this weekend at Mar-a-Lago on Friday. Donald Trump met with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Yeah. Just for our viewers to remind them, Orban believes that liberal democracy doesn't work. He's packed Hungary's courts with loyalists. He seized control of media <clears throat> outlets. He's friends with Putin. He's friends with Xi. <clears throat> this is what Trump said about Orban on Friday. There's nobody that's better, smarter, or a better leader than Viktor Orban. He's fantastic. He's the, as you know, the Prime Minister of Hungary. And does a great job. He's a non-controversial figure because he said this is the way it's going to be, and that's the end of it. But he's the boss. Do you think Viktor Orban's leadership is something that Trump aspires to in a second term? I think the best way to judge President Trump's second term is by what he did in his first term. Uh, you know, Russia didn't invade on President Trump's watch. Uh, Hamas didn't try to destroy Israel on his watch. Uh, the Afghanistan, uh, they, the Taliban weren't in charge on his watch. So here's what I would say. If you're worried about the world being on fire, you're right. If you think uh, Joe Biden's policies are uh, lack of deterrence and is, he's weakened the eyes of our enemies, you're right. So if you want to get the world yeah. back in order, you yeah. better vote for Trump. But you know that former President Trump has talked about being a dictator on day one. He said it's nice to have a strong man running our country. He's talked about retribution in a second term, Senator. Yeah. You know what he said? Retribution would be success. Did, uh, you know, who knocked uh, Trump off the ballot in Colorado? Who knocked Trump off the ballot in but Maine? There's a liberal 
jihad against everything Trump. I'm not worried about Trump destroying democracy. The, I'm worried about Joe Biden were, destroying the world. Those were Republicans in the Supreme yeah, Court but, but, has but, now but, put him back on the ballot. But, but the as, point you're you know, trying to ask me, is Trump bad for this country? No. I would say I'm that asking, Joe Biden's policies are bad for but, America but, and have got the world on fire. Senator, just be very clear, though, he is aligning himself with Viktor Orban, who who's a member as a of strong, NATO, who just voted to let sweeten in. Who has sweet, sweeten in. reluctantly though, but he has. He Orban's has not back on the ballot. Let's have a debate. In, in, he okay. has rolled back Democrats. Orban is Hungary. not on the ballot. You got to right. vote between Trump and Biden. Biden has screwed the world up every way you can. Broken borders. The world's on fire. If he's really is back, if he's with it, if he's energetic, but, get in a room with Donald Trump and debate. Take questions from people like yourself rather than reading a teleprompter. If there's ever an election in the history of America that yeah. deserved debate between these two candidates, it's this election. Trump just told me, the campaign just told me, anytime, anywhere, let's debate. All right, but very quickly, just one more point before sure. we move on to my very last question. <laughs> okay. Trump has said to Putin that he would welcome him invading a NATO country. Senator, yeah. if they didn't pay their bills, should should people not hear that rhetoric and right, right. and feel as though he is potentially aligning himself with the type of leadership right. that Orban has shown? That was in reference to NATO paying their fair share. There are 19 nations that don't pay the two percent they're supposed to. When Trump was president, he had a to four, well, let a me NATO finish. Country. No, no, that's not. That's you shouldn't say that. The point is, Russia didn't invade Ukraine when uh, Trump was president. The world of uh, the Arabs recognized Israel through the Abraham Accords when Trump was president. If you want to look at who's the most stable person for the world, Biden versus Trump, Trump wins in a landslide. Well, and just to be very clear, you mentioned a lot of different things. When you talk about the Afghanistan withdrawal, that's something that Trump had actually put into place before mm, Biden but he didn't got do into it. office. Biden did but, Well, because it happened when he was in office. But <laughs> okay. let, let's move on to TikTok very quickly, okay. Senator. The House is planning to vote, as you know, yeah. this coming week on a bill that would force the Chinese company to sell TikTok or face being banned. Yeah. Trump initially favored banning TikTok. Now he's opposed. He's expressing his opposition. Do you support banning TikTok? Where do you fall? I think the goal is to make sure American data that TikTok collects doesn't fall in the hands of the Communist Chinese Party. I'm really conflicted here. I knew this about social media. They're ruining America. They're so, uh, uh, sexual predators abound on these sites. You can't sue social media companies. Uh, there's no regulatory body. That's what I'm focused on. Banning TikTok, uh, maybe that's necessary to protect American data from China, but if you can find a way to avoid that, that'd be good too. You were a strong supporter of it in 2020, though. Do you no longer No, no, it? I understand people like TikTok. I would like to keep TikTok running, but not have our data used by the Communist How Chinese How do you vote Party. on this? I don't know yet. Okay. I mean, I'm just being honest okay. with you. I am definitely conflicted. But one thing I'm not conflicted about, every social media company should be sued if they do damage to you and your family. They're protected from lawsuits. Section 230 needs to go. All right. Senator Lindsey Graham, thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.